So let me tell you my definition of a good girl that I wanted to get married mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. So for me, I didn't want this kind that does mascara mm-hmm. and eyelashes oh. and red hot lipstick. Yes. My idea was, you know those Kalenjin ladies that do short hair? Yes. And uh, they don't do nails, nails that oh. are exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was- we realize now we don't have money for, for honeymoon. honeymoon. So we decided to go downtown. There's a place near Ronald and Gales. Downtown. 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 To look for a place where at least we could pay 1500 and at hide. least for a night Fadi. and hide. Mm. Hey. So God again surprised us. Hey. So I was working for government. Uh-huh. I'm earning, I think, 17000 She's running a business. She's earning like three times what I'm earning. Oh. So every time we'd have conflict, somehow I would think, maybe it's because I don't have money. That's yeah. why this small girl here is disrespecting <laughs> me. There is no there is no journey that can teach you First Corinthians 13, like yeah. parenting and marriage. Mm-hmm. You learn that love is patient, yes, love is kind, kind love suffers yeah. long, love does, does not, not keep, keep a record of your life. If you don't pursue your children, mm-hmm. you're not playing your godly parenting role mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So, and especially for men, you know, for, for women, it's easy to pursue children, mm-hmm. but for men, you got baby. Oh, you got the baby before. Yes, yes, oh, that's yes. why he's 15. That's why he's 15. He's and actually, yeah. he's turning 16 this he's year. He's turning ah. 16. Oh. He was a youth child. We judged you. Oh, oh yeah. We were, we were actually, we, we, we had to even stand before the, the, the congregation. congregation. <laughs> yes. And that was not easy. again and welcome to the Roda Kidula show right here on YouTube. I hope you have subscribed and I'm so glad that you are part of this amazing community that believes that marriages are still thriving in this generation, in this season that we are in. So thank you so much for all your support and I would like to appreciate JK Studios for the amazing job that you do. If you're planning for a wedding especially, please don't go anywhere else. Consider JK Studios and any other event that you have and you need photography or videography. Tafadali call JK Studios today. They are very affordable and very flexible you need to see that for yourself so today i am mesmerized these are celebrities right (laughs) (laughs) i'm hosting big people i'm hosting big people authors and yeah you will see their books running on the screen over and over please introduce yourself to us they say ladies first so you go first thank you so much roda for having us uh we are privileged uh, this morning to just be a blessing to the people of God. Mm-hmm. Um, I am Mary Ngonyo Nyoike, and I'm a mother of three, a, a 15 year old, a 10 year old and a five. Mm. And it's such an honor to be just, just to be uh, mothering these beautiful babies. It's a great privilege from the Lord, which I take seriously and I'm blessed to be uh, a wife to this mm-hmm. awesome, amazing man, and I really thank God for him. Do you, know, you have a voice for radio? Have you been told? Uh, no, I sing, so oh, I yeah. know that's why. <laughs> oh, she's a song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's a songbird. Yeah. She's a songbird. Oh. Let's yeah. meet your husband now. Thank you so much, Rhoda, for having us. Uh, Boniface Nyoikenganga is my name. What do I say about myself? I am married to this amazing lady. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, like she's mentioned, we have three wonderful children. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've been married for the last 15 years, uh, mm-hmm. enjoying the journey of marriage, not enduring it. Mm-hmm. And also learning every day on yeah. how to be better spouses to each other and yes. more Christ-like spouses mm-hmm. to each other. Um, my biggest joy is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I do not think there is any, any other greater identity than mm-hmm. being a disciple of Christ. Mm-hmm. So on top of that, I'm a trainer, 
I'm a coach and I'm an author. Uh-huh. So I think that suffices for an introduction. How many books so far? Um, I have written many books, but I've published seven. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have another three that are coming out this year. So, yeah. Tell I us about writing. your latest. <laughs> so I'm writing a book called Humility, the Game Changer. Oh. And uh, I started writing that because first and foremost, I realized my biggest challenges in marriage were pride challenges. Mm. So I began to, yes, <laughs> my wife can testify. She would say a very loud amen. <laughs> It has taken a whole 15 years. Mm. So I, and I began to do that study because I began to realize if there is one thing that brings stability into a relationship, mm. it is humility. Yeah. And uh, humility makes you a person that is adaptable. It makes you a person that can be able to be a resource and a reservoir. Mm-hmm. And I also began to discover it is the one thing that uh, the Bible tells us when you're proud, God will resist you. Yes. But when you're humble, he will give you grace. Yeah. So what other place do we need grace more than in our relationships? Yeah. And mm-hmm. the only thing that can bring that grace is humility. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that book. Mm. Oh, yes. na- there's one on marriage, the letters one, that you've published. That's not even a letter. That is the first book I did. Oh. So I did a revised edition. Okay. You know, as you grow older, you realize, hey, hey what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> now I would I like to read sorry. the two. <laughs> In fact, I read the two when I started doing a revision of that book. Yeah. I did I revised it 90%. <laughs> I need me to I realized, start with the original one. I my see. wife has taught me so many things. My <laughs> philosophy was not accurate. Oh my goodness. Do you still have copies of the original one? I have one copy. One. Ah. So sometimes when I, I look at it, I feel like I want to call the people who bought Boats. the first copy <laughs> and apologize to them. And then the other day somebody read that. There's the, one who bought here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Interestingly, I meet people who tell me that book changed my yeah, life. Exactly. God always knows what And then I'm thinking maybe doing. in that season it changed lives, but yes. I think now that I've grown. But it is like they say, you grow, but the book doesn't grow. Yeah. That's oh, why yeah. we do revised editions. Oh, okay. So that's also an, a book I'm very excited What's about. What's the title? It's called Cultivating Authentic Relationships. relationships. Yeah. Mm, so okay. Just speaking to the reality that authentic relationships don't happen, they are mm-hmm. cultivated. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. Now we need to know who met who here. Mm. Where were you? Who met who? Who I met think I'm who? the one who met her. Oh, you saw her first? Yes. I also saw you. But you know. And who interestingly, saw who first? when we saw each other, mm-hmm. we never thought that we were going to get married. So let me tell you my definition of a good girl that I wanted to get married mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. So you know when you when you when you get to that season when you're thinking of settling down, you have an idea of how this woman is gonna look like. Yes. So for me I didn't want this kind that does mascara mm-hmm. and uh, eyelashes. Oh. Mm-hmm. and red hot lipstick. Yes. My idea was, you know those Kalenjin ladies that do short hair? Yes. And uh, they don't do nails, nails that oh. are exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was my kind of uh, an idea a of, wife the, kind material. of, of, of yes. the wife I wanted to have. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, I'd been working in Nanyuki and I had met a lady that was very close to that Kalenjin kind of thing. Mm. So, and we had built a very good friendship over time. So when I was just thinking, maybe I now want to start thinking to propose, I got a transfer. And uh, my plan went Prayer. up in smoke. Someone was praying. Who you are Naomba? You are Kati Kwanza. I used to, at, at my level at that time, yeah. I used to, this what I had told God, mm. yeah. I, I don't want to get through this age, this, this is what I was talking to God about, of mm-hmm. course, at that time I was not as passionate and as serious as I am now, mm-hmm. but I was praying. Mm. Yeah. All prayers are valid. Yeah. So, well, maybe God just overlooked the imperfections of the prayers. And but, but the good thing about that time is yeah. that I was so, yani, ushe onam to honest, mu naive, to, like yeah. a baby. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, that time, si kwa na hizi worries mingi mingi, tunakuanga nazo si kusijui, am I really praying the right way? Yeah. Am I, I was just me, mm-hmm. praying like me, yes. you know? So... <laughs> God could not have denied me. Yeah. yeah. What so, were so you? Oh, you were describing. You yes, now got so a now transfer. I, I, I got a transfer. And I really fought that transfer. Mm. You know, in Lembaka, una jaribu vile, una fake maletas, yeah. vile, transferred. Mm-hmm. But 
unfortunately, I was the only single guy in the office. Mm. And they said, you know, transferring married people is a lot of work. Sasa yeah. wejuu mm. single, itabidi ufunge virago and you move. So I moved to a place called Sabasaba, Shingo Upande. I had a very heavy heart when uh-huh. I was making that move because I was thinking, eh, now this is what I was thinking and then now God has just disrupted my plans. Yeah. But sometimes I realize God has a habit of disrupting your imperfect plans yes. so that he can usher you to his perfect will. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. So I moved to Sabasaba. I was working at the post office. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, I kept trying to keep the other relationship going. But somehow long distance psh, just didn't work for me. Yeah. So I decided, that, okay, let me move on with my life. Let me nurse. The, I don't know whether it was a heartbreak. I, I, I still try to figure out whether I've ever had a heartbreak. If I you nursed think, something... I think it was maybe semi-heartbreak because it was not <laughs> those ones that are tea. You don't eat? Yeah. No, it was, I'm feeling sad, but then it has happened. Yeah. I have got to move on. Mm-hmm. So one time as I'm seated in the counter and it was one of those offices that has like three clients every day. Oh. She happened to have brought her sister in a school, yeah. in a, a school called Kamahuha Girls. Mm-hmm. So I saw this girl walk in, and when I see her, the first thing I say, these are those drama girls of Nairobi. Mm. She has ah, this exaggerated yeah. makeup. Mm-hmm. She has a, they were called low bottoms. What, what, what were they called? Uh, the yeah. hipsters. Oh, hipsters. <laughs> I I'm remember. thinking, this girl is not saved by now, except <laughs> girls don't look like this one. So I happened to be reading a book by Josh McDowell. Mm-hmm. It's called True Love Waits. Yeah. So I said, this is the kind that probably has been, this has not book. been waiting. Mm-hmm. So I pulled the book and I gave it to her. Oh. Can you imagine? This is and the then, first time you're meeting her. I think this is the first time we met, right? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, men has a way of, of cutting, cutting stories, so yeah. I think... <laughs> He's trying to summarize. Yeah. There is a you, why you stop, yeah, there's something you're forgetting. Okay, now that's why you need so, a wife. When me, I'm, 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 I'm on assignment, Yakupeleka, my sister, to school. to school. Yeah, so when I got there, I'm actually in a hurry. Yeah. So when I get there, I'm rushing him and I'm telling him, please kindly serve me first yeah. because we are already late. And we, 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 we got lost on the way. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm coming in a hurry. Yeah. So you need to really serve me very fast. Yeah. So when he finished with me, I, I gave me the money order. Those times we used to, 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 to use orders. money. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I told him, because it's really hot, and I have, a, I have my, my bag and my sisters, so let me leave my jacket with you. Then when I'm coming back because I'll be using the same route, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll pick it yeah. as I as I go home. So when I left my jacket, I went this to is school. A stranger, and, you're leaving your jacket. Can too. you imagine? I don't. You know me, I'm this so is a daring woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a jacket, just a jacket. So, uh-huh. uh, but it it did not have money, right? Even if it had the money, by the I'm, oh though, I'm one of those people. Me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't mind. Mm-hmm. As in, I just. You know, I left my jacket with him and I went to school. Mm. So as I was coming back, I found the office closed. <laughs> was it closed? Yeah, it was. I don't remember. It was. Okay. So I, I, I looked for someone around there who mm-hmm. I could ask what time they close. And mm-hmm. I mean, just any information about them. So he had me talk from inside. I think you, you are balancing yeah. accounts yeah. for yeah. that day. Yeah. So and he opened the door and mm. I was like, Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> my jacket. My jacket, my jacket is mm. jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so he came out. I think it was late at around 5.36. Mm. So now then, that's when we started talking. Uh. After he gave me my jacket, I told him how mm. it was. Nini, nini. He started asking me a few questions. Nini. But you know me, f- the first time I, lo- I, I, I saw him, mm. I, I thought to myself, wow, this guy looks good, ah. but definitely these good-looking men, men are players. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> they are players. He definitely has one, two, three girlfriends. Yeah. So that was my that was the impression impression I mm-hmm. got in my mind. So I didn't bother much. Yeah. Yeah. But now he gave me my jacket, and he offered to give, to give me a push. Oh. Where, the because the stage was near where yeah, his office yeah. was. So now that then that's when we started talking. I introduced myself, Nini Nini, and he gave me that book. That's now when he gave me that the book. book. You needed it. 
fact. I said she needs to know that true, true love. True love waits. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I was yeah. asking Maza, why did he give me this? Mm-hmm. It was huge. It was a big book, and about then, 400 pages. And then I was not a reader. Yeah. yeah. So I just went and kept, in, kept it in my house. And mm. I didn't read it. It was so huge. I wondered, why did he give me this book? Then I was just reading the Bible and I'm done. In fact, I was just going through my books the other day and I came across it. I said, oh. wow. <laughs> this is the book that started it all. <laughs> yeah, so that's how we met. So you kept talking from there. Yes, we started talking. Mm-hmm. In fact, now because I'd grown up going to DC Umoja, yeah. so I came to learn that she was a member there. Yeah, oh. I was so, actually in the choir. Yeah, so that I think mm-hmm. also spurred my interest to know what kind of a person is this. Mm-hmm. But then I'm not even thinking dating or marriage or anything. Mm-hmm. I'm actually saying this girl needs serious discipleship. <laughs> First of all, the way she packages herself is mm. not very saved. Yeah. So I had very serious reservations mm-hmm. about her. Yeah. And up to date, if you ask me how we even came to a place of even thinking marriage, I'm still yeah. puzzled until mm. today. I say, what? The Lord does wonders. So you became friends. We became, we became friends. And from mm. that day, for me... I decided I'm not buying money orders anywhere else. Oh. I, I spotted an, a good looking man mm-hmm. and I loved the way he was expressing. From the word go, mm-hmm. I was asking God, God, please bless me with a man mm-hmm. who knows how to express himself well. Not one of those men that when you invite them somewhere yeah. and you give them a chance to speak, they have nothing, nothing to, to say. To say. I, I, I hated that. Mm-hmm. I wanted a man who could express himself well. Ooh. And I got that in him. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, somehow the, the, the outward appearance was not very appealing. It was not, it was not what I was looking for. But you said the he was content, good looking. He was good looking, but the, the way he was dressed. Oh, and, you know those you know, trousers that used to eh, shine. The, the dressing, <laughs> I think. The Sun. Yes, <laughs> the, the 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 way he was packaged <laughs> was not what I was looking for. The product was for. good. Is the packaging? The, 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 but the improvement. content was what <laughs> good, I was looking yeah. for. So yeah. from that time, I decided I will not be buying money orders from anyone yeah. anywhere else. So I, I used to go there to get my money. Every time I'm, I'm, I'm taking my sister to, back to school, mm-hmm. I could get my money orders from his office. So that's how we got close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To become just to become close with one another. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it took a while. Uh-huh. It took How a while. Long? It took a yeah. while. So every time I would come back to Nairobi, because yeah. my parents were living in Nairobi, mm. I would go to this Umoja, mm. and I would yeah. see this beautiful girl. She was in the choir. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I would see this beautiful girl in the choir. Mm. Still, I was asking myself, you know, this look looks very exaggerated. Uh, Somehow, for, for I think then, because of naivety and a misunderstanding of life, I used to think that these ladies that do makeup, they, they have something they're hiding. Yeah. So, you know, like, uh, I mean, why don't you want to be your real yeah, self, yes. right? Mm-hmm. But then uh, I think with time, I began to relate with her. I began to see the kind of person she is, mm-hmm. the responsibility she was carrying. She was running her own business. Mm-hmm. And then I think you're about 21 or mm-hmm. 20. Oh. 20. Mm-hmm. She was educating her sister. Wait, yeah. this time no. you're meeting you guys are 19. We, no, I was 22, I you think. You were 22, I was 21. Yes, oh, okay. yes, 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 yes. So, of course, I began now to be mesmerized by her level of responsibility. Mm. Because to find a 21, 22-year-old mm. carrying a load like that is yeah. not... You, you don't find that a lot. Yeah. So those kinds of things began to impress me. Mm-hmm. And then somehow we just started finding we were having a lot of conversations. Mm-hmm. I was teaching a lot of scriptures mm, and mm. I mean we just uh, our dating was more scripture than anything else. Yeah. No, that's God, no, what yes, they, sorry, they word. say boring. Oh yeah, Actually, but it was very exciting for us. Actually at that time when he used to teach me the word, yeah. we were not dating really, yeah. but we were very close we were friends. Very close, yeah. To an extent I could not go anywhere without him. Yeah. And when he's invited somewhere, he could carry me along. Mm-hmm. So we used to talk a lot and we were very close. We used to study the word together, especially him. There, there was no discussion without the word of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And that that made me want to hang out with him more. Mm. Because I, I, I love God and mm. I want to hear more of yeah. his word. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, so at that time we were not dating, but we were just in a close relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when did love... I love you, start. You know, uh, so she was working in a salon, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and uh, 
I had started now developing some, I think when the friendship grew, I now began to see, wow, maybe mm -hmm. if I am to marry, this is not a bad girl to marry. Mm -hmm. So what happened is uh, she had some friends that uh, I think instinctively I thought they were not being a good influence on yeah. her. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I decided to, as, a, as part of my discipleship responsibility, uh -huh. <laughs> to call her out. Uh -huh. Then when I called her out, mm -hmm. the response I got actually almost made me get a heart attack. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, you've not even told me anything. Who are you to tell me who I should be hanging around? around. And then I'm thinking, I've been trying to send signals, signals here, but you don't seem to be picking the, the rhythms of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that telling me that, you know, who are you, mm. brought me aback. I started saying, yeah, what? By the way. I thought there was something going on here. Maybe um, there is nothing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, and then I think she started not picking my calls. Is that so? Yeah. I told him never to call me again. And I Just told because him, by I've the told way, her, her friends. This, friends. Thing of, of this tightness, this, this, this friendship thing, I think we should do away with it. Because yeah. why are you trying to get to a place where you have no, you have mm. nobody has opened that door for you for you you know mm. because i could anything. not make conclusions <laughs> on assumptions absolutely when signals yeah mm. yeah signals mm. you have not told me anything so you're not allowed to start telling me who to associate with that is not hey. your place <laughs> but at that time by the way rhoda mm. i was into him Kabisa, by the way. So what but was that about? It's a game you have yeah, to play. I, yes, I wanted, I, I wanted <laughs> to know really where I how, is. How serious mm -hmm. the chase yes. is. Yes. Uh, I have never felt, I think that's the first time I felt raw rejection. Because, <laughs> you know, for her, it was raw. Mm -hmm. You know, there is rejection that mascara, you know, there is a way you can hit somebody with a brick, but it's a velvet covered brick. Mm -hmm. So this one was not velvet. It was a raw brick, like... Can you back off? Uh -huh. And then I'm thinking, wow, I mean, how do you do that to a to good guy like me, like me yeah. who is trying to help you? Oh, <laughs> in terms of mentorship and yeah, mentorship. discipleship. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, that is when now I got bold. I realized mm. if I was not going to make a commitment yes. that is open and clear, yeah. I was going to lose this girl. Yeah. Because I knew there were very many lions that were praying for the same antelope. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, true. So, yeah, true. So, yeah. <laughs> she was in high demand and low supply. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I decided, let me let me be courageous enough and uh -huh. tell her, um, you know, the reason why I told you that you need to mm. check your friends mm -hmm. is because I feel like there's something going on between us. And because there's something going on between us, yeah. I, do, I would not want anything that would sabotage it. Yeah. So somehow <clears throat> the communication lines opened up again. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt at peace. You know, the mm. way the scripture says the peace of the Lord mm -hmm. that surpasses. I felt oh, that peace. Yes, yes. So did you finally now make the statement she was waiting for? Oh, yes, yeah. I did. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. I did. And when I did, I was shocked again to realize that this girl was so interested in me and she yes. was pretending all along. I was not that, pretending. Uh, I just wanted to hear you say yeah. what you were supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> Can we take this relationship to the next, next level? level? Yes. <laughs> so you know me, I thought the non-verbal cues were going to like uh, bring yeah. her to a place. You know the way you warm somebody up before you? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was trying to do all along. But I discovered the more I was trying to warm her up, the more she was becoming frozen. And that was not very she nice. She was waiting for a specific <laughs> word. Yes. Yeah. There is no, you know, playing games around the bush. Yeah. You go straight to the point. Yes. It is at that point that you now address young men. So here mm. is one thing that I learned. And yeah. I think that's a huge lesson that I mm. learned from her. That leading a lady on and being specific about what the relationship is about yeah. are two very different yes. things. Mm -hmm. A lot of young men, I think, they shudder and they draw back and they don't know that you don't get a lady committed by mm. sending nonverbal cues. Yes. You need to be very specific. You know mm -hmm. the way Adam was? You are bone of my bone, yes. your flesh of my flesh, mm. and I want to take this to the next level. Mm. And don't create room for assumptions, because assumptions True. create a space where misunderstanding happens. Yes. And this is why you find a lot of people are getting character development, yeah. because they are playing on that zone of assumptions. Yes. And of course, I know why they do that. There's a fear of rejection that every man has. Mm -hmm. You know, am I enough for this lady? Am mm. I sufficient enough to 
to match the standard she would want. So mm -hmm. I think for me that was the biggest fear, but somehow I overcame it and uh, by God's mm -hmm. grace I gave my proposal and it was... Uh, yes. it, it did not go through any vetting process. No. It was an instant. Mm, I pray yes. about it. Yes. Yes. No. no, she did not. Did you pray about it? No, I didn't. Because I had already seen and found what I wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, some of these things, it's like when you're going to buy a car. Yeah. Brother, do you... Do you do you do you tell God that okay, show me what I need? You mm. just do your due diligence. Yes. Then you go and you're told Get this the is car. the car you're looking mm -hmm. for. And then mm. You don't say now yeah. this is yeah. the car. This but is let the car, but let me go. No, 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 no. When you get yourself. what you're looking for, mm. you don't dilly dally. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just, A lot of people actually use prayer to sanitize mm. indecisiveness. Mm. Oh yeah. The scripture has given us a clear guidance, mm -hmm. and if you follow the scriptures then God will lead you in the right way. Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, God will not make the decision for you. Yeah. You have to make the decision to say, yes, mm -hmm. this is the person, mm -hmm. and take the risk of being told no. Because even mm -hmm. if you're told no, that's one no in another five billion women in the world. Mm -hmm. So you are just one out of five billion. <laughs> There's still hope for you. <laughs> when did yes. we now get married? So we got married in 2018. Was it 2018 or 20, 2019? 2019. 2019. Yes, yes 2019. 2019? Yes. yes. No, no 2009. 2009. 2009. Yes. Oh my yeah. You guys, you said you've been married for 15 years. <laughs> we are getting old. Oh 2019 my is the other year. Before it's 2009. 2009. <laughs> oh my yes, goodness gracious. You're right. You're we are not right, good at keeping right. records. <laughs> By the way, I'm normally confused between... Yeah, 2019, yes. 2009. 2009. Yes, I mean, yeah, so we got married in 2009. Nine. Uh, in December, December 12. 12. What do you remember? About, was there a wedding? Yes, we Definitely. did a wedding. What do you remember about it? <clears throat> you know the what way, I remember? Uh -huh. Can I say what I remember? Yes. Or do you want to say what you remember? So when we planned our wedding, mm -hmm. we didn't have money for deco. Deco. Yeah, deco. Uh -huh. deco for the venue. Mm -hmm. We did our wedding at Tintin restaurant. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we prayed and tried to look for money everywhere we couldn't get money. Mm -hmm. So when we couldn't get money, we decided to give up. We will do a wedding without Deco. Yeah. I mean, there is no halabaloo about Deco. Yeah. It's, it's us being joined <coughs> together. It's not mm -hmm. the Deco. So it happened that the same venue we were using, mm -hmm. there was a Muslim couple that was supposed to do their wedding in the evening after yeah. us. So when we came in on the morning of our wedding, actually, this, let, let me allow me to cut yes, you short. Yes. The, the was it the manager or the owner of the, the place owner, called yes. us before, mm -hmm. yes. and he, he informed us that yes. there's someone who is who has an event after he, us. Yes. Yeah. So he he was requesting us yes. Yes. that if he we can allow the Muslim guy to yes. do his deco, yeah. we use it, and then. Uh. Yeah, mm. he was actually requesting us uh -huh. to allow that guy mm. to do his deco yes. in the morning, morning because he has no time in, in between. between. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ooh. Imagine. So that's how our budget for deco was <laughs> yeah. met. So I was, I, when I was, as I was coming in, I didn't know what to expect. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I didn't know how the deco was Looks looking like, like because this is not our deco. Yeah. Mm. So the Lord just, just mesmerized us. Yeah. Then he just surprised us. Yeah. Because what we got yeah. was just not even what we could even have thought about. We could not even it was oh. more, We it. could not have afforded it. Yeah. By the way, it was yeah. more than yeah. we could ever even think. I mm. never thought there was something like that. Mm. By the way, mm. I had never seen something like that before. Yeah. Yeah. So when I came in, I was just thanking God. Mm. Did the guests know? No, no, they didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. <laughs> It was one of those divine surprises yeah. that God does. And then you're like, what? Imagine. So like when we arrived in the morning, because mm. now when we were told the deco is going to be done, we didn't know what it's going to yeah. be done. So me, I got there earlier, because for her, she she was coming in later. Yes. You know, the, the, they say the, the bride, bride comes later. Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw the deco and I, I didn't know whether was, to cry. You know those, mm -hmm. those few times when men cry? Yeah. I think that was one of those ones mm. for me. So I looked at it and I said, you mean God, you can actually do exceedingly abundantly? abundantly. That scripture now was demonstrated mm -hmm. real time for me. And to date, uh, when I look at our wedding photos, that's the first thing I notice. Mm -hmm. I don't deco. even notice my bride first. I notice the deco first and I'm like, <laughs> wow, this is God. There mm -hmm. is a God that cares about mm -hmm. every little detail of our lives. Yeah. So for me, I think that was a What's, big highlight. What you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, that one is a highlight for me. And also the way God provided. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we didn't have anything. We, di we, didn't, we didn't have... As in, we have Were a budget. Working? I was working. We have a budget of yeah. half a million. Yeah. Was it half a million? Mm -hmm. half a million. And we didn't have anything. As in... <laughs> 
people just give us the money. Yes, it was. <laughs> so how God came through, yeah. God sent us a chairman mm -hmm. whom we did not even know. A stranger was a our chairman. A stranger, you know. Because the guy who was supposed to be our chairman refused this, to turn yes. up. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we got a chairman. A friend of ours mm -hmm. brought in a friend. Yeah. I think they were going somewhere. And yes. he said, there's a meeting I'm attending yeah. here at, at the Jew. Antonio's. Antonio's, mm -hmm. yes. And, and, mm -hmm. and now that guy, that, that friend of ours, was being escorted by that friend of mm -hmm. his to, to this meeting. Yes. Then they go somewhere yeah. else. Then when they came, they, they, no they were stuck. There is no chairman. There was, yeah. there was no chairman. So their friend to our friend offered to be the chairman. the chairman. And just like that, he became the chairman and the MC for the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> he even provided his car to transport Imagine. me to the wedding venue. <laughs> Imagine, yani God, he did God a stranger. Yani. Yeah. It was um, yani the, the provision of God. Mm -hmm. We saw the hand of God. The hand of God. Yeah, yeah. In, in that whole process. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. Was just, that was a highlight. Mm. I mean, just having somebody we didn't know. Yeah. He got a band for us. You remember? Uh, imagine. Umojangoma imagine. band. Imagine. You know? <laughs> he recommended us to that band. And he negotiated for us. Oh. But they were, interestingly, he didn't even give us money. Uh, but what he but gave what us. what he process. did was mm. more than money. Yeah. yeah. Because he coordinated the whole process. Mm. And we had an incredible wedding. Wow. In fact, we keep saying to ourselves, if we were to do our wedding again, mm -hmm. we would we do would it the exact, exact same way, same way. the exact mm -hmm. same place. With the same people. In same the same people in the committee. Very <laughs> happy <laughs> they were so supportive. Yes, yes, so yes. So, so it was it was incredible. Uh -huh. We had uh, mm -hmm. an amazing Chinese menu. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. We, we ate ice cream. I've <laughs> never been to a wedding that has an amazing menu like ours. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it was good. It ice was cream. Money. And, yeah, yeah. and we did ice cream without money. Imagine. <laughs> ice cream. Everybody got I've ice cream. I've actually never taken ice, ice cream in any way. And Chinese yeah. chapati. Chinese you know? chapati. Yeah, it was incredible. It, it was awesome. Then the guy who was uh, the guy who was the, the owner, manager, the owner of the, the owner place. Of the place that God gave us serious favor with mm -hmm. that guy. And this is a guy who was, uh, I think, a Buddhist or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. But just gave us such an easy time mm -hmm. in terms of just the planning process and what have you. And mm -hmm. it, uh, awesome. I mean, I think our our, our wedding was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we went uh -huh. to a very nice place for our honeymoon. Yeah, it was all favor. And, uh, it was all favor, of course. Because even money for honeymoon, we didn't have. Yeah. We had actually gone to town Somewhere. before the wedding. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> to look Ooh, for a place wedding, to hide ourselves. Wedding morning. No, 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 no. Before. I think oh. about a week before. Because yeah. uh -huh. we, we realized now we don't have money for, for honeymoon. honeymoon. Mm. So we decided to go downtown. There's a place near Ronald and Gallas. Downtown. 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 To look for a place where at least we could pay 1500 and at hide. least for a night Fadi. and hide. Mm. Hey. So God again surprised us. Mm -hmm. So when our, our wedding was done, one of the guys who was our friends mm -hmm. told us, I'm going to take you uh, to the Methodist guest house. Mm -hmm. oh. Took us there. We had an amazing one week of just... Mm -hmm. One week. Yes. Nice. Which we didn't have money for again. So it's yeah. another he additional negotiated miracle. For us. Negotiated for us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was just incredible. So your marriage began with testimony. Yes. Oh, yes. As we began by seeing God from God. day one. <laughs> so how is this first year? Now we expect mm. you guys to just continue flowing. So our first two years, maybe three, mm -hmm. were very stormy. Because um, one, we got married when we were very young. Mm. I was 24. My wife was 23. Mm. So, of course, a 24-year-old and a typical 23-year-old, mm -hmm. they still have insufficient maturity for the demands of yeah. marriage. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when we got there, because we are both very strong-willed, yeah. um, getting along, solving conflict was yeah, very yeah. challenging. Mm -hmm. Had you gone for PMCC? Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. We had. Uh -huh. But I realized, I think, beyond PMCC, people need post-marital <laughs> mentorship or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, for us, it was that. And I think part of what created that dynamic, mm -hmm. so I was working for government. Uh -huh. I'm earning, I think, 17000 She's running a business. She's earning, like, three times what I'm earning. Oh. So, every time we'd have conflict, somehow I would think, maybe it's because I don't have money. That's yeah. why this small girl here is disrespecting <laughs> me. <laughs> and dishonoring me mm -hmm. and not submitting to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I started trying to see how to work hard to make 
financial momentum so that I can earn respect. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that respect really cannot be earned that way. Mm -hmm. You earn respect not by what you have, but by becoming a certain kind of a person. Mm -hmm. So our first three years were very stormy. I think that's the time we almost like said, mm -hmm. you go back to where you came from, I go back and we figure out our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was not easy uh, because like uh, as a woman, I was not really uh, doing what I was doing to disrespect him. I didn't mm -hmm. know what it was, it was, it was uh, speaking disrespect to yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Because I think the most challenging part was I used to, to, to come in very late from mm -hmm. work. Yeah. And the reason why I was doing that is because I needed to take care of what he could not take care of mm -hmm. in terms of uh, our house, uh, you, you know, the bills and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. So I needed to work harder because I had clients, I was busy. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I thought to myself, now that he's not able to, to, to cater for everything that we need mm -hmm. and I have an opportunity to earn, yeah. I can come late but bring something on yes. the table that will be able to take care of mm -hmm. what he cannot take care of. Yeah. And to him, that was communicating something else. Oh. Actually, mbaka nilikuwa naike wakafi. You should be here by seven. You can imagine. So I used to run and the from work. Broken, yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> when he saw that 7 p.m. was not working, yeah. he moved it to 9 p.m. Uh -huh. And still 9 p.m. was not, not working, working. Because I was busy. really busy. busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now me, I'm thinking, I am trying to help. Yeah. I am trying to, 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 to take care of the bills. Yeah. You know, because for me, when I got into marriage, my money was our money. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can buy you whatever you want with my money and mm -hmm. that is nothing mm -hmm. because we are one, you yes. know. Yeah. But now to him was disrespect because mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's pushed my time from seven mm -hmm. to nine. Yeah. And still, there's a time I came in at midnight. <laughs> Because of how busy I was. At that time, he called his mother in law. Now oh. you need to come and talk to this girl. I called my because, dad actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah my He's, dad in law. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he called him to come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was actually crying because mm -hmm. I felt I'm not being understood. Yes. I felt like, why can't you see what I'm trying to do? Mm -hmm. Coming at midnight. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm 24 years, 25 there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you, instead of sitting down in the house and complaining that yeah. I'm coming in late, why don't you come mm -hmm. and pick me up? Mm. Oh, that is my thinking. Yeah. But to him, that is not what he's thinking. He's thinking, I told you to come here at nine. Who should, who, whom should you be listening to? Your yeah. clients or, or me? me? I'm hey. the authority in this house. Hey. So I'm like, my God. So what was going through your mind? No, first and foremost, you know, we were living in uh, Inako mm. uh -huh. and she was working in Umoja too. Uh -huh. So the first thing that was getting into my mind was, mm. first of all, it's not even safe to arrive at that time. <laughs> Something could happen to mm -hmm. you. So my telling her to come early was as an attempt to protect. Oh. Because I'm, think I'm thinking, now, what if she meets with people along the way and maybe something bad happens mm -hmm. to her? And yet what she's trying to get, we can forego it, yes. you know? So I think that was a huge um, challenge for me. Mm -hmm. And then I also think I also had my own insecurities mm. oh. beyond uh, her coming late and being, you know, vulnerable to attacks and whatever. Mm -hmm. I think I also had my own insecurities. Yeah. Uh, as a result of, you know me, I grew up seeing my father provide. Mm. Oh. And my mother was always earning less than my dad. Yeah. So here I am, the roles are reversed. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how do you even lead a woman who has more money than you? Mm. Because uh, if it's the house, she's giving like 50% yeah. of the bill. Mm -hmm. The shopping, she's doing the whole of it. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what do you attach to your name as a husband even, you know? <laughs> so I think I had those insecurities mm -hmm. and I came to realize later that those were the insecurities that were making me to be very tough mm -hmm. unnecessarily. Because now I look back and I say, wow, God had given me a wife that was helping me Imagine. and here I was fighting her. Mm -hmm. And they were not, you know, I mean, we never got to fight physically, but yeah. we had serious disagreements. You know, like those ones where you don't talk for like three weeks. But I also think... Mm -hmm. Three weeks? <laughs> yeah. I think at some yeah, point we got yeah. to three weeks and mm. we were not talking. You know, everybody wakes up and they live their own life. Mm. Mm. 
And but I also think mm. um, even the way as a woman you communicate to your husband, you know, mm. at that time when he, he he's earning less than you, mm. he's already feeling inferior. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So um, where I am right now, I could have known how to handle him, mm -hmm. considering that he's already feeling down. Yeah. He's, he's, he's feeling maybe like he's, he's, he's not doing what he's supposed yes. to do, so he's already discouraged. Mm -hmm. So as a woman, you need to know how do you handle mm -hmm. a man who is already discouraged? Oh, yeah. What are the right words to use yes. at that time? Mm -hmm. So then I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what words to use yeah. to a discouraged man. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how my body expression. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, mm -hmm. yeah. Even if I got how many millions, yeah. I already know yeah. how to talk to a man mm. who doesn't match my, yeah. who does not have what I yeah. already yeah. have. So I think uh, lack of information, mm. lack of exposure, lack mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, wisdom. <laughs> and you're also very young. Yeah. You even and tried. I, yeah. Actually, money. You know, young and money. Money. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Young and so, money. Mm. Young and money. And she, so, her business was actually doing, doing very, very well. well. Yeah. But here I am, you know, I show up from work. I'm working for the government. Yeah. The salary is little. Mm -hmm. My prospects of career progress are limited. Yes. So I was very beaten up by life as yeah. well. And mm -hmm. I think that also contributed. Yeah. So I think if I had understood again what I know now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably I would have handled the situation yeah, differently. Better. And I think with, with time comes maturity and yeah, understanding. Mm -hmm. So, but I think those were very formative stages of our mm -hmm. marriage and they were necessary because now we have come to understand and appreciate each other in, in a greater way. Mm -hmm. Because now where we are in our lives, the tables have turned now. Yeah. Yeah. Because now I find her business now at some point started doing badly. Yeah. And then I was the one now to take care of it. So mm -hmm. I think those cycles teach you that that's why you must always have each other's back. Yeah. No matter what life throws at you, you must have this, uh, your spouse's back. Mm -hmm. And you must realize that they are your teammate. They are oh, not your yeah. enemy. Yeah. So I think that understanding came with time. Yeah, it came with and, time uh, because also... Um, Right now, I, I when now we got to a place where uh, we have two babies, now mm. we want to get to the third one. I started slowing down. Yeah. I started I started seeing things mm. in his perspective. Yeah. Mm. He used to tell me that a woman needs to be home. Oh. So I started seeing things in his perspective because mm. even the Holy Spirit started like. Mm -hmm. I mean, showing yeah, showing mm. me mm. that what he was saying was what I was supposed to do. Mm. So the Holy Spirit just enabled me to mm. slow down. Mm. Because if it were me, by the Mary, I could not have slowed down. Mary yeah. is driven. Yes. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit enabled yeah. me. Yeah. Because the more, the, 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 the closer I became mm. to the Holy Spirit, yeah. the better I became. Mm. And yeah. I felt I needed to slow down. I needed to submit more. Mm. I needed to be a mother, mm. you know. Oh, yeah. Not... Um, business is good, it's doing mm. well, money is good, money is good, but I needed to be a mother to my children, yes. you know. Mm. So I, I started slowing down mm. at some point. Actually, when I was get, getting to my third born mm -hmm. child, I actually left business mm. completely. Oh. And I decided I'm not going to do house helps, I'm going to take care of my Your kids. Children. Yeah, mm -hmm. so at that time, I realized that when you align with God. God's plan. Mm -hmm. He takes care of Absolutely. you. Yeah. Absolutely. And right now God has taught me that there are things I used to think that I cannot do without. Mm -hmm. Right now it is it is nothing. Mm. Those things are they're, they're non issues. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So mm. I think uh, when you align with with, with with the Lord and mm. with with where he where he's directing you to yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. He enables you to do some mm. of these things that yeah. will bring peace, mm. will make your relationships better. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like asking this one. What is submission to you? So for me submission is three things. Yeah. And the first one is the passion to honor. Mm. Mm. Because for a man you will never convince him you're submitted to him for mm. so long as he senses dishonor. Mm. No. And honor is a language for the ego of a man. Mm. It is the only language the ego of a man understands. Mm -hmm. And most times when a woman does not understand that, and I think that is what now again God does in terms of helping a woman 
come to a place of submission, mm -hmm. he trains you to learn to honor him and then mm -hmm. to honor the authority yes. he has placed above yeah. you. And then number two, I think submission is also supporting the vision and the goals of your husband. Mm. Because again, you cannot talk of submission if you're not in a place of being a resource to the bigger authority that God has put in your life. Mm. You cannot claim to be submitted when you're not supportive of what your husband yeah. is doing. Mm. And then I think number three, submission is basically nurturing the greatness of your man mm -hmm. with words, with deeds, and with everything that you have. Mm -hmm. So that God gives you a raw material, but you use what you have yeah. to bring out the best in that. Yeah. So I usually feel like, um, and again, I think submission is not a decision you can make independent of the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. In the same mm -hmm. way, I would also say, I do not feel like you can legitimately love a woman authentically, yeah. except God has worked on oh, your heart. Yes. So for us, I think, Part of our journey has been learning that the more you allow God to mold you, mm -hmm. the better you become a partner to your spouse. No. And the more you run away from the making of God, mm -hmm. the more you will have endless cycles of fights that are unnecessary yeah. and battles that could be avoided. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, and I don't know whether it's the same thing for you, I've realized that allowing God to make me, mm -hmm. allowing God to speak to me, you know, there are times my wife would offend me and God says, mm -hmm. Don't engage in that yeah. conversation. Yeah. Oh, true, true, so just true. stopping that allows yeah. me to be in a place where I can lead mm -hmm. because I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the same case, I think, for her, mm -hmm. the Holy so. Spirit speaks to you. And, mm -hmm. and as you follow his leadership, you find submission becomes easier mm -hmm. when you're submitted to God to first. God first. Yeah. Yes. What is respect? That, that, uh -huh. Re respect. Maybe for you me. can just add what you wanted to add first. Yeah. 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 Yes. Submission mm. for me. Yeah. Mm. And... Um, I had some one of those uh, women that I really, really celebrate say mm -hmm. that it is power put under control. Mm -hmm. That Rhoda, I am a powerhouse. Yeah. I am a strong woman. Yes. I am. I am educated, mm -hmm. I am empowered, mm -hmm. but I choose to submit yes. to this authority that mm -hmm. God gave me. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So to me, um, submission is not really inferior. It is not that. Yeah. It's actually a superior place. Exactly. Uh -huh. When you submit, mm -hmm. and it, is, it starts by submitting to the spirit mm -hmm. of Absolutely. God first. Absolutely. I don't think there's any way you can mm. ever fully submit to the to mm. your husband yeah. to the authority down here mm. without having to submit to the Absolutely. authority yes. there first yes. mm. so when i allowed the spirit of god to work on me mm. i have realized that our marriage is better mm. my parenting has become better yeah. Yeah. everything about my life yes. has become better because of mm. just submitting, submitting to, to the god. spirit Absolutely. of god mm. first mm. Yeah. that's powerful because mm. yeah. 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 sometimes we're busy down here yeah. Oh, yeah. and we neglect oh, yeah. oh, god yes 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 the bigger Trump. fight is are you submitted mm. to god mm. because that mm. now allows you to be in mm -hmm. a place where he can adapt you yes. to fit to any context uh -huh. yeah so i feel like the God factor is what really makes marriage to work. To work. Uh -huh. And it is really what brings the conviction and the making of God in us. Mm -hmm. So that now, we, in fact, I, one of my mentors many years ago told me something. The best gift you can give your spouse mm -hmm. is a more Christ-like you. And I thought that, that was so that profound. Is yeah. And the more I've pursued that, mm -hmm. the more I've found why. Yeah, there are times we can even stay for so long without having a conflict until we ask ourselves, are we okay? Are we, <laughs> are we pretending? You know? Or, but it's, it's the work of God. Yeah, or, or, or we have a conflict, mm. uh, like uh, when we are going to bed, but in the morning, it's like nothing happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So you yeah, we have already moved on. Yeah, yeah. And we did not even resolve it, but we have already yeah, moved, we've moved on. on and, and, yeah, we've moved on. And because God uh -huh. now does an mm. inner work yeah. mm -hmm. that allows you to rise above carnality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I usually say, in marriage, the downward spiral begins with carnality. Oh, yes. The upward spiral begins with Christ-likeness. Okay. And you choose which direction you, you will want go. to take. Mm. Yeah. Wow, so that is been, so powerful. It's been incredible. Yeah. That one was ma majorly for the women to know. Yes. Because especially even single ladies, mm. some of them believe yeah. submission yeah. is bowing down to yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. No. no, it's not. Submission mm. is, you know, mm. I even mm. came to understand, like yeah. for me in my yes. marriage, yes. the things I thought respect are, 
I have to ask my husband, do you yes. feel respected? Yes. Yes. Because yes. the respect, yes. I know, like, the yeah. way I respect my dad yes. is different, it's different. Yes. from what it's my it's husband. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. yeah. And you don't I, love somebody based on your terms. It's you based love on them their based terms. on their, their terms. terms. Yeah. So you've got to understand them. And part of that understanding, it mm. is only God who can give you. Yeah. Because uh -huh. God created them. He understands them perfectly. Mm. And one of the blessings of having God in a marriage mm. is God gives you intelligence mm. that you could not even read in a book. Oh, yes. You know, there are times I'll be in town and the Lord will just tell me, give me an impression, get some chocolate for your wife. Oh. And I bring chocolate, just chocolate worth 200 shillings yeah. and everything in the house just boom, blossoms. Yeah. And, and it is that, the ability to tap into the intelligence of God who created your spouse so that now you can love them based on that intelligence oh. and not just your own thinking mm -hmm. and your own assumptions. Oh, yeah. And that I think has been an amazing experience for us. Mm -hmm. So I think when we, we talk of respect, yeah. mm -hmm. it depends, it, it varies, I think. Mm -hmm. it, it differs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, respect to Bonnie is mm -hmm. not respect to karaoke, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. They're different. So when Bonnie communicates that this is what I define mm. yeah. as the respect, sorry, I should be able to give that and even more, yeah. you know, yeah. so I think it differs. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It does. For men, it's mm. like mm. respect is different mm. for yeah, every man. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. Maybe for Bonnie, mm. uh, when we go somewhere, mm. he requires me to behave in a certain way. Yeah. But for some other men, mm. that is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. To them, it's coming home early. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah so that is respect. It depends. Yeah. Like for me, mm. I think one of the things we've thought about where this conversation of respect is concerned mm. is when I'm going to speak somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell her, you know, we need, like there's a time we are going to Nakuru. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so my wife was supposed to drop my son somewhere and then come back come. and then we go. Yeah. So I told her, you need to be back here by 11 because yeah. yeah. we need to leave to go to Nakuru is about three hours. Mm -hmm. Then she shows up like two hours late. Was it about two hours or one hour? One I think hour. one hour. One hour. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, that is disrespect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for me, time is very valuable. Yeah. Today, when we're coming yeah. here, I told her, you know, you need to, we need to be out of the house by, by seven, seven letters. <laughs> yeah, they came before. So, and, and the more I have seen her grow in that, and she has uh -huh. done a lot of growing in yes. that. In fact, sometimes I find that I'm even the one now making her late. Oh. So when she does that, I feel respected. respected. You know, I feel, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, I, I love reading books and mm -hmm. buying books. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think initially she had a lot of issues with that. Because she said, you know, you've not bought a shirt of late, but you, yeah, you've bought this book. Mm -hmm. But nowadays she's, she's understood that that's my world. Yeah. So understanding the world of your yeah. man mm -hmm. and understanding what matters to him yes. is what codes the respect that yeah. you give him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very yes. true. Yeah. Study your man. Yeah, yes. study, yes, mm -hmm. because yes, <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are different. Yeah, they're, they're different. different. Uh -huh. yeah, they're and different. the way they define respect is different. Oh, yeah. So just oh, know yeah. who, who your man is mm -hmm. and give him the highest respect. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And when you respect a man, there is nothing that man cannot mm. do for you. And again, I insist, this takes the hand of God. It does, yeah. it does, it does, it does. Mm -hmm. yeah. So ev for every lady, mm. for every young girl, for yeah. every, every woman who is mm. married, please, I would urge you to just get close to the Holy Spirit. Spend yeah, yeah, yeah. time with God. Mm -hmm. God will teach you so much. Yes. So much. Yes. He will enable you to do so much. Mm. He, he says that He has given us the Holy Spirit yeah. to be our counselor, to be, to, be, to be the one who teaches us. Mm. Yes. He mm. will teach you. Yes. It is so true. Yeah. Because I've seen Him in my mm. life. Yeah, He has teach, taught you. He has trained me mm. even on how to talk to my husband, mm -hmm. on how to handle him. When he's complaining, how should I respond? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, I don't have a mentor, and I can but I have, quite seen, a <laughs> I have seen mm -hmm. mentorship from the Holy Spirit, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it has really been working mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I actually want to talk about mentorship. Mm -hmm. yeah. How can you survive without a mentor? Yeah, that Or is your definition why I don't have is a one mm -hmm. is because I've not really gotten what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm still on the lookout. Since you got married, <laughs> um, I used to. Uh -huh. But um, I think the the, the 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 more we grow, yeah. the more we redefine. Yeah, seasons it. change. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've also found in my own life mm -hmm. I've had to redefine quite a number of mentorship mm -hmm. relationships because mm -hmm. you enter different seasons, you yes. find somebody does not have what it takes yeah. to mentor you in that season. Mm -hmm. So there are seasons you actually find mm -hmm. that it is God who journeys with you in those yeah. seasons. But then the other seasons when you find God bringing somebody into your life, mm -hmm. he brings another person to be a resource. Yeah. But also, mm -hmm. let me also note that 
not having a men, what you would call a mentor mm. does not mean that you don't seek counsel. Yes. No. The yes. most important mm. thing is to be in a position mm. in your heart and in your mind mm. that you always mm. seek wise counsel. Yes. That's why Very the Bible true. talks about in a multitude of counselors, yes. there is safety. Mm -hmm. yes. So the most dangerous thing is not to have a mentor. The most dangerous thing is to be in a place where you don't have counsel mm -hmm. that is coming towards you. Mm -hmm. And counsel can come in many ways. You mm -hmm. can go to YouTube and get mm -hmm. counsel. Can read you can book. read a book and get counsel. Mm -hmm. So there are diverse ways that God can directly give you counsel yeah. by the Holy Spirit. So there are diverse and multifaceted ways that counsel comes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the important thing is to be in a heart posture mm -hmm. where yes. you're willing to receive counsel. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Where are we? When, when did children come? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> we have three children. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our last born is five. Mm -hmm. Our second born is ten, mm -hmm. and our first born is fifteen. Mm -hmm. So that's been the journey. Yeah. And How uh, did they change your lives when they came? Where the I first do, one. I do not think there is anything that changes, especially your patience, mm -hmm. like parenting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, 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 well. Because uh, I think. By the time you, you know, and I read something that I have come to prove to be true. Mm -hmm. Many times you think that your parents were wrong yeah. until you get to a place where you have children that think that you're wrong. You're wrong. And then you realize how right, your, how right your parents <laughs> were. So I think for us, it's been one, a journey that has had serious um, frustrations mm -hmm. in some seasons yes. where we have felt seriously inadequate yeah. about parenting mm -hmm. our kids. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, it has also been a serious journey of joy and learning mm. and learning especially to depend on God mm -hmm. and realizing that, hey, God, the ultimate parent, also had frustrations yes. with his children. Yes. I mean, yes, the yes, first yes. child he created, Adam, messed things up. Yes. So I think in the journey of parenting, we've realized, yes, kids will have their own challenges. Mm -hmm. And it is a journey that not only uh, stretches you, but it also grows you. Mm -hmm. True. You know, sometimes we think that when we are raising children, we are raising them. As we raise them, they're also raising yeah. us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we've realized, I think for us, mm -hmm. that's been one of the biggest learnings mm, that, yeah, hey, mm. our children have expanded us, yes. taught us that there are things we must learn to overlook. Mm, learn to there, listen. There, there are times you want to lash out as a child, but mm. you have to be quiet. Yes. And also just the willingness to be patient and very empathetic. Yes. I think if there's one thing that I Ooh. have been taught by parenting is my empathy, empathy. must grow every day. I don't know what have you mm -hmm. been taught by kids. <laughs> Meaning, I realized my empathy was very low. So, uh -huh. and now that we have a teenage son, now it's even oh. yeah. being stretched. Yeah, more. I've been stretched in the area of learning how mm. to listen, to be patient. Yeah, and you know that that I'm not always right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes oh, I'm yeah. told something, and I'm thinking. Now my pride cannot cannot allow me to say, <laughs> and yeah, I was wrong, <laughs> by then you were right. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit of God has continually taught me yeah. mm -hmm. that I can stand and, and tell my son, by the way, mm. you're, you're right, right in this yeah. one. Oh. Yeah, imagine. So th those many years ago, I could not say something like that mm. to my child. Mm. I always thought um, the, um, the, the final say yes. lies with me. But right now, now mm. that I have a teenager, mm. I actually have a preteen and a teenager, right? Yeah. So I have learned to listen mm. to them. Mm. I have learned to be empathetic. Yes. I've learned to be gentle mm. because these are human beings just like oh, me. Yeah. Mm. And I put myself in their shoes and say, by the way, even for me, there are many things that God tells me to do and, and I, I'm yeah. not and you don't. and I don't do. Mm. So why do I expect yeah. perfection for my mm. children? Mm. So my expectation is now Managed. Yes, because <laughs> you know, even when God expects holiness from me, sometimes I fall short. It's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. journey. Mm. So even for me, Nimesha Jeka, your place, your God, He is gentle. Mm. God, teach me how to be gentle mm -hmm. with them. Mm. Teach me how to be patient. Mm. Teach me that even when they don't get it right, mm. I, I, I still love Absolutely. them. I still oh, yeah. appreciate Absolutely. them. I still embrace them mm. like my own. Yeah, because yeah. I think me and I can go back, both mm. of us. Yes. To yeah. Buy yeah. It, you know, yeah. Yeah. Back and, and you have to keep learning. Yes. Mm. And, and I think uh, there's, there's no 
there is no journey that can teach you first corinthians 13 like love. parenting and marriage mm -hmm. you learn that love is patient, patient love is kind, kind love suffers yeah. long love does, does not, not keep, keep a record, a record. Of <laughs> That one is the biggest lesson for our parents to learn. You cannot keep a record of First and foremost, when you start parenting a teenager, if you keep a record of uh, wrong, you, wrong will, you will lose them. Yes. You will lose them. Uh -huh. So, and also, yeah. I think the other bigger lesson is the prioritizing your children and pursuing them. Because yeah. God is a pursuing parent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Even when man was drifting away from him, God okay. pursued him. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that I've come to realize is that I must pursue my children yes. and I must pursue them with love. Wow. Mm -hmm. So like now the other day I'd gone to my son's uh, school. He's just gone to Form 1. Mm -hmm. And we had been called because there were some discipline issues. Yeah. Of course, just all the parents. Yeah. And I was just seated there with him and... I, God just reminded me of that, that you know what, if you don't pursue your children, mm -hmm. you're not playing your godly parenting role mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So, and especially for men, you know, for, for women, it's easy to pursue children, mm -hmm. but for men, there's a tendency to disengage, be mm -hmm. busy with so many things. Mm -hmm. And then you realize by the time you're trying to pursue that child, you already lost connection with them. Mm -hmm. They don't know you, you don't exist in their yeah. world. So I've come to appreciate the place of pursuing prioritizing mm -hmm. and being patient. I mm -hmm. think those three lessons have been huge for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I must be patient, I must pursue, and I, I must prioritize. Oh. And it, it's a death to self every day. How did they change your marriage? I think they've brought us closer in many ways. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I think one of the things we have <laughs> purposed also. I think when we got kids, yeah. we got an awareness that how we run our marriage mm -hmm. will determine number one, first and foremost, whether they'll ever be interested in, in marriage. marriage. Yes. In God. Uh, yes, in God. <laughs> and then also, there is something that I bring into their lives. There is yeah. something she brings into their mm -hmm. lives. And that is, so we learn to synergize more. Yeah. So there are times I find there is something my wife will address better than me. So I've also learned that my, my wife is not just a follower in this relationship. Mm -hmm. She's an equivalent leader to me. Yeah. So I've got to allow her to lead in certain things. Mm -hmm. And that has been um, a huge learning curve for me also to realize, hey, I cannot parent these kids alone. Yeah. Uh, I need the help of my wife. She cannot parent alone. She needs my help. So I think it brings you closer. And it also humbles you in so mm -hmm. many ways. You realize, what? You, mm -hmm. you can think you figured out parenting yeah, until parenting, you yeah. start taking that journey. But the things you used to talk about other oh, people's yeah. children. Uh, yes, you realize children. when you're slow to speak. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, we had some young parents, one time we had them say, oh, you know us, our children talk in tongues hey. and they're only two years old. We looked mm. at them and, and we laughed and we said, wow, awesome. okay, we, we shall revisit this conversation After 10, ten years. years. Ten years. <laughs> So it's a humbling journey, mm -hmm, but it's a yeah. beautiful journey to be a parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it is, it is, it is, uh, I, can I call it weird or funny that mm. sometimes they, they even help us solve our differences. Oh yeah. Ah. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So when we are disagreeing and we're in the living room, all of us, and I'm, and I'm disagreeing with him, he's disagreeing with me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our first one son yeah. will say, you, what mom, is, you... What is too? this all about? Yeah. Do you know, I can't see any issue here. Yeah. Mom, what is, what is the problem? So it's a refreshing journey to yeah. actually have those conversations. And for them to also realize that, yeah. you know, conflict happens in every marriage, yeah. but you solve it. You solve yeah. it. So that's been, I think as you raise children now, you begin to yeah. see, wow. Mm -hmm. They can also be your advisors at oh, some yeah. point, and that's okay. Yeah. And I think also just allowing them to speak to certain things mm. also cements the bond of family. Because mm. now when you're able to solve and move on, yes. it's, it's amazing, it's incredible. To a point, our, our first, uh, first born son sometimes tells us, wow, I love the way you relate. I love ah. the way you, you handle each other. Ah. I love the way you, you get along, you know. Yeah. yeah, and that, by the way, that was very affirming mm. for us when we had, mm. especially our teenage son, say that. Mm. Uh, mm. Knowing where we've come from, yeah. and the fights that were there. <laughs> 
But he yeah. didn't witness the fight. No, 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 no. no, no he no, was no. very young. He was very young. You got a honeymoon to, baby, right? We, and we used to. No, we actually got our baby before. Before. Oh, before. Yes, 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 yes. We we got our baby. Oh, you got before. the baby before. Yes, yes, oh, that's yes, why yes. he's fifteen. That's why he's fifteen. He's and actually yeah. he's turning sixteen this he's year. He's turning ah. fifteen. Oh, is he turning yeah. Fifteen or 15 years? Yeah, he's turning yeah, he's sixteen. Turning 16 yes, absolutely. This year in mm. November, and we turned mm. fifteen. Yes. Last didn't the church judge you? Oh yeah, we, we didn't. you have to be judged. We definitely. You have to be judged. Because be you were singing or you were not in oh, yeah. I was, was in the actually you were in the choir. choir. Actually <laughs> at that time I was in the choir and he was the leader of the youth. Of the youth. Oh, he was the youth chairman. We champ. judged you. Oh, oh yeah, we were, we were actually we, we we had to even stand before the the congregation. The congregation. And <laughs> yes. And that was not easy. Mm, it was. Yeah, especially it was, for uh, you. you. And you know I was now the one to take the one chairman. Yeah. Yeah. The chairman. But I'll tell you, I think that was... You know many people look at it and they think that was the most humiliating no, experience. No, it wasn't. But it was one of the most freeing experiences mm, of really? our lives. Yeah. To actually come to a place mm. of confessing and owning up yes. uh -huh. and taking responsibility, responsibility. for yes. a wrong done. Yes. That was one of the most freeing things we ever did. Mm. You know why? I think it liberates you from people pleasing. Oh, yeah. Because you can get to a place where your Christian walk is about who is watching, yeah. not God is watching. Mm -hmm. So it was a, I think it was a very liberating experience in mm -hmm. that sense. But also an experience that actually birthed my first book. Oh. Because because of the experience I went through with mm. church folk, yeah. I realized how many other young people are going are through going these through kind of experiences yes. and they don't have a safe shelter where mm. they can go. Mm -hmm. And here, yes, you can find yourself in a, in a scene, yeah. but you can also come out yes. and actually yes. create a testimony out yeah. of that. Mm. So our ministry to young adults, our ministry to couples was birthed but there. Then. Yeah. Oh, so mm. God can actually take what looked like a mistake mm -hmm. and turn it to a miracle. Mm. I actually read somewhere that you know you are honestly repenting yes, yes. when you don't care who knows. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and and that's care. when you truly know you've been liberated yes. from the pressure to please people. Uh -huh. And church people can really put you under that pressure we to can. please them. Yeah. Mm. But I think uh, it's how you take it mm -hmm. and also how you choose to journey with God. Yeah. Because even the idea of confessing was not my pastor's idea. It was my idea. Yeah. Really? It was my idea. I told him, you know what, this has happened. I'm a leader in mm -hmm. this church. Yeah. I will take responsibility because I don't want to take a precedence yeah. where people commit sin mm -hmm. and now they start hiding and oh, playing yeah. hypocritical games. Mm -hmm. I want to be one to stand and clear the air. Yes. If my ministry will end with that, so be mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But I had also read a scripture that says, mm -hmm. he who con conceals his sin mm -hmm. will not prosper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he who confesses his sin mm -hmm. will find mercy. Mm -hmm. So I knew for me, taking responsibility yeah. was securing mercy for our marriage. Mm -hmm. And I did not want our marriage to start without yeah. the intervention mm. of the mercy of God. True. Yeah. Uh, so for any young person mm. who has fallen into sin, mm. and maybe they even stopped going to church, mm. uh, things just, you know, when you stop mm. going to church, you stop mm. uh, being accountable to yes, anyone, yes, and they're yes, on yes. that journey mm. going. Mm. What would you advise them? Here is what I've learned mm -hmm. by both experience and also by working with many other people that yeah. have been in that space. Mm. You don't heal by running away from God. Yeah. And you don't heal by running away from God's family. God has created a family called the church with all the imperfections it has. Mm. And church has many imperfections. Mm -hmm. And if you ever find a church that is perfect and you get in there, yeah. you'll be the one who will make it imperfect, <laughs> right? Mm. So I have come to appreciate mm -hmm. the place of God being a healer and you cannot run away from God and be healed, mm. but also God has chosen the instrument of his body to be the vehicle through which you become healed. Yeah. Because like now, I think one of the people that God really used to journey with us was our late Reverend, Reverend Matthew Wambua. I mean, yeah. he even uh, chose to stand with us in our marriage and mm. walked with us. Mm. And even after that, gave us a uh, an opportunity to get back on the ministry yeah. and continue serving yeah. God. Oh, sure. So, mm. just such a gracious man mm -hmm. and such an authentic man. Mm. Because I think sometimes we judge people because we don't think it can ever happen to us. To, yes. And I'll tell you something, Rhoda. I think mm. part of what contributed to even us finding ourselves in a place of 
compromise mm -hmm. was that high-minded mentality. Oh. In fact, I remember there's a time we had gone to Sitam Valley Road mm -hmm. and then there was we a couple that had... Prayers. We used to go for prayers mm -hmm. when we were dating. There was a couple that had gotten into a situation yeah. and now they were Confessing. told to confess. Yes. So, you know, prayers. we would look at yes. them and say, you know, how did you even land in compromise? Yeah. And did you, yeah. Didn't you even see it coming? Mm -hmm. So, I think God also used that process to, to destroy our pride mm -hmm. and self-righteousness. Because mm -hmm. I think for me, by the time I was meeting this lady, I had never kissed a lady. I had never touched a you, you know mm -hmm. what you would call the things that happen in dating scenarios? You already scenarios. knew that because yeah, you was, said you had the shiny... Oh yes, trousers. the shining trouser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you when you have that one? shining trouser, uh, you cannot yeah, even hug a lady. No. You, you know you do, do those... You know he never hugged me. I never Before hugged. Before we started dating, uh -huh. mm -hmm. We used to say hi, like Zileza. You know the Pentecostal yeah. handshake? Yes, yes. that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Imagine. So I think I'd gotten to a place, and, and this is something that you look at in retrospect and mm -hmm. see. Yeah. I had gotten to a place of self-righteousness. Yeah. And God will never allow you mm -hmm. to continue having a journey of faith that mm -hmm. is based on self-righteousness. Wow. So in retrospect, I look at it and I realize, wow, nowadays when I hear somebody has been in a situation, yeah. I have more compassion, yes. I have more mm -hmm. empathy. empathy. And instead of running to judge them yeah. i want to run and lift, lift them, them up yeah. because there is a work that happened in my yeah. heart because of that wow. i don't know whether the same work happened in your yeah. heart or it's only I, me I had self righteousness I, issues i was just wondering <laughs> how do people get to that place yes. yeah. of, of, of you know and doing, why how? Yeah. Yeah. you know so i think god needed to destroy that self righteousness because i feel yeah. that was pride also mm, yeah yeah because mm. self righteousness mm. runs on, on yeah. the fuel of pride yeah so uh -huh. i think god yeah. really needed to mm. to break us then mm. make us mm. to become people yeah. who are more you know are yeah. more empathetic yeah. more loving towards people who yeah. Fall. Yeah. 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 and right now if i hear of a girl who has done the same thing yeah. i am in a better position yeah. to be able to restore them to mm. be able to talk to them I walk with mm. them yeah and walk with them and also what i would say if you find mm. yourself fallen mm. don't wait to be pushed to confess yeah. take responsibility yeah. Yeah. that is what christian growth is all about mm. you don't look for blame to fix mm. you take responsibility yeah. and the moment you take responsibility there is a door of grace that opens mm. god gives you grace to rise up from whatever mistake that mm, I put you yeah. down. So I think even for the kind of wedding we had, was God now affirming mm -hmm. that because you took responsibility, yes. I am willing to beautify even your errors. Yeah. Because one of the things that uh, grace does is that it conceals shame mm -hmm. and it colors what looked like it was a weakness mm. and makes something beautiful out Amen. of it. Wow. So we have seen God beautify us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I have to ask two more. Yes. Number one is, mm -hmm. why do you think many young marriages are breaking? Like even looking at you getting mm -hmm. to 15 years. Mm -hmm. Hey, after this, you need we to go to G out married. and celebrate. <laughs> we need to go and taste that, <laughs> that big mug of... Uh, hey. She will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh -huh. think... <laughs> One of the things that I find destroying a lot of marriages nowadays mm -hmm. is the refusal to die to self. Yeah. No. Because marriage is not for two people who are living for selfish interests. Mm -hmm. It is two people that are willing to die to self yeah. and live for God and look for how to be a blessing to the to other person. Other. Not what to get from the yeah. other. Mm -hmm. Because marriage is not a place for lasting and getting. It's a place for loving and giving. Mm -hmm. So you make your spouse the object of the reception of every good thing that you oh. have. Without expecting anything in but return. In return. That is now the you play part. your role. Mm -hmm. You play, play your, your God-ordained mm -hmm. role. Yeah. So that now, I must not wait for my wife to submit before mm -hmm. I love. love. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sure. must mm -hmm. see that as my God-ordained role. Role mm. and do it excitedly as unto God. Mm -hmm. Not that uh, I'm waiting for her to reciprocate. Yeah. No. Mm. If God is not the focus and the motive of what you're doing, you mm -hmm. will get tired. Mm. Oh, yes. Because there are times yeah, you will expect true. reciprocity mm. and you will not get it. Yeah. Mm. But if it is God that is the driving engine of that yes. process, mm -hmm. you find that there is grace in that yes. and there is continuity mm -hmm. because now God is the one that is driving the wheel. No, yeah. But I think a lot of people get into marriage with entitlement mm. oh, i will yeah. do when you do when you do I, right i, I, I did not you, because you did not you see now mm -hmm. so that is a very immature view of life yeah. because you only mature to the extent that you choose to be a giver oh. perpetually mm -hmm. even when you don't get reciprocity oh. and trust that god in his wisdom 
will allow you to come to a place where in his own way mm -hmm. he will work on your spouse mm -hmm. so i think for me i've come to realize that playing your role god ordained role mm -hmm. and also allowing god to work on your heart mm -hmm. to meet the needs that your spouse may never meet because yes. there are there are needs mm -hmm. your spouse may never we meet never. Yeah. your spouse may not always encourage you and tell you you are the king no no mm -hmm. no but you've got to look out to god and and allow god mm -hmm. to work on you mm -hmm. and develop you to a more christ-like spouse for your yeah. for your mate and and here is the, the the other thing i would want to say roda i think i've come to see that we have a misunderstanding of marriage. Mm -hmm. We think that marriage was created for happiness. Yeah. Marriage was created for holiness. Mm. Marriage is a place that creates a perfect context for sanctification. Where? So that my wife becomes the tool that God uses mm -hmm. to reveal areas yeah. that I need to be sanctified yes. in. Mm -hmm. If I cooperate with God, then she becomes a tool for the refining of my life. Mm -hmm. And gold only increases in value when it is refined mm -hmm. and refining has to do with fire yes. and fire has to do with pain, pain. right mm. so when we open up our lives to that place where mm. we say yes god yeah. has given me mary mm. mary is part of the tools that god will use for my sanctification yes. and i cooperate with the sanctification process mm -hmm. i will find that i actually love her more for being the vehicle that God did uses God uses to expose my blind spots mm. and I have found that in many ways if I had not gotten married to this lady I would not be as sanctified as I am because oh. sanctification comes through that vehicle oh, yes. so when we fail to see it that way mm -hmm. we see our spouses as our enemies oh, instead yeah. of a God chosen instrument to refine it mm -hmm. yeah and Rhoda, mm. how do you learn all these things he's talking about yeah. if you're not close to God? If Absolutely. You're not close, yeah. Absolutely. People nowadays, people are listening to the wrong people, yeah. listening to the yeah. going Follow to the wrong places for mm. for, for, for counsel. For counsel you know, yeah. you need to know where to go for counsel. Mm. Yeah. You need to be tight with the Lord Absolutely. Mm -hmm. because that way He will teach you all these things He's yeah. talking about. Yes, He has not gotten him any. He has not gotten them anywhere else. Mm -hmm. He has gotten. Them just by staying mm -hmm. at the feet of Jesus yeah. because that is where you get all this counsel, that is mm -hmm. where you get all this wisdom to be able to know that in everything that you do, you mm -hmm. do it like you, it is unto the Lord. Lord. Because mm -hmm. me, I, I, I work a lot with ladies and I hear them saying that, Connie, am I the only one who will be just giving yeah. and giving and giving? Mm -hmm. and what is he giving? Me, I stopped. Me, I stopped. Yeah. That is the way they talk. And I'm looking at them and I'm wondering then, you don't trust in God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because our God says that when mm -hmm. you sow, you will, yes, you will you reap. reap. You might not reap at the time that you're expecting mm -hmm. to reap. Absolutely. But in God's time, mm -hmm. yes, you will, will surely reap. reap. Mm -hmm. If truly, truly you're doing it unto the Lord, mm -hmm. you will surely. Because Absolutely. our God keeps his word. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do what he says, he will truly honor you mm -hmm. yes. with the rewards that he has promised. Wow. Yes. And they say about depositing. I heard someone saying about mm. depositing and mm. withdrawing. Yeah. Yes. You what must is it? Deposit more than you withdraw. <laughs> With yes. yeah. Yeah. Even in a bank, uh -huh. there is what is called an overdrawn account. Yes. An overdrawn account is when you access more money mm. than you had saved. Yes. And that means that your account is going towards the red. Yes. You actually be, you are being taken to CRB. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so part of uh, the reason God gives us marriage, yeah. marriage is not a place to keep withdrawing what you've been deposit. Mm. You keep depositing, you keep replenishing, you mm -hmm. keep adding. And the more you add, the more you'll realize that God in his own justice system will allow you to reap. And mm -hmm. guess what? I usually tell people, let's even say your spouse doesn't change. Yeah. You will still have won because you will have become more like That's Christ. Christ. So yeah. there is no loss. It's a win-win proposition. Mm -hmm. If you play your role as God ordains, mm -hmm. you win because you become the person God wanted you to mm -hmm. become. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marriage is hard work, right? It is hard. It is hard work and it is hard work. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And, and, and explain. The hard, so it is hard work in this sense. Yeah. The hardest work you have to do has to do with your heart. With you. 
Oh. You, your mm. heart. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Who you are on the inside, mm -hmm. how you manage your emotions, how you manage your attitude towards your spouse. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. It's more your heart. heart. And when your heart is refined by that process, mm -hmm. and when your heart becomes more godly, more yeah. giving, more grounded, mm -hmm. you find that in many ways you become a better uh, yeah. partner to your spouse. And guess what? The work of the heart cannot be done independent of the intervention of God. Mm -hmm. That's why we are taking this whole thing back to, back God. to God. Because yeah. it is God that changes our hearts. Yeah. He says he will give you a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You can get to a place where God actually gives you a heart that allows you to sense when you're about to offend your spouse. Oh, yeah. But you've got to submit to that process. And a lot of people who try to work hard externally mm -hmm. fail because they are not doing the work of the heart. Yes, Sometimes they are trying to work hard to change their spouse. Yes. Sometimes they are trying to work hard to score marks or to yeah. get back. Bonga and it points. doesn't work like that. It works by doing hard work on your heart. On your heart. Mm. Yes. Oh, and that, that brings you powerful. to a better place. Yeah. There's so much negativity about mm. marriages as come. Mm. Mm. And mm. the way you say it, I've heard that yeah. women inciting each other yes. against, yes. you know, yes. me, yes. I can't yes. wash his, I cannot yeah. serve yeah. him. That. He knows, he that. should know how to cook, <laughs> he should, you know. Yeah. Mm. So, tell us the good side about marriage. Hey, marriage is beautiful. Marriage is beautiful. Just having this man in my life yeah. has changed a lot. He has taught me how to read. Mm -hmm. He has taught me how to even handle myself as a woman. You yeah. know me, I used to be those girls who are all over the place, uh -huh. by the way, and you, I know you can already see it. But he has taught me to compose myself. Yourself. Yeah, you know, you're so composed. So, there's so much added advantage mm -hmm. when you agree to be able to submit to God's will by mm. allowing your spouse mm -hmm. to be able to mold you yeah. because it is in calling out that which is not pleasing before God when he does that mm -hmm. you become a better person yeah, person. Mm -hmm. yeah you become a better because there is no anyone in this whole world mm -hmm. who can how do I put it who can call things out like mm -hmm. your husband or yeah. like your wife mm -hmm. you know so when he does that into my life I, I don't know where I could be without him, mm -hmm. by the way. He has been of great, great help mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. He has taught me so much, marriage so much. Marriage is beautiful. Yani marriage mm -hmm. is just everything to me. Mm -hmm. oh. Everything. Marriage and parenting my kids, I think that's what I live for. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, because mm -hmm. it is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Your, your side, because men are listening to, I hear there is CG Max Masculinity Saturdays. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where well, you meet and lie to each other. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Mm. Here is what I will say. Yeah. Um, you know, in the Bible, interestingly, there are two Adams. There is a first Adam and mm -hmm. there is a last Adam. Mm -hmm. The first Adam failed his bride yes. because he failed to cooperate with the law of God. Mm -hmm. And they ended up being sent out of a beautiful place called Eden. Mm -hmm. But there is a second Adam called Christ, what is called the last Adam. Mm -hmm. He came, he loved his spouse and died for his bride. Yeah. And husbands are called to emulate that. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When he did that, he actually proved that Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 11 is true. Yeah. Two are better than one, mm. for they have, number one, true. good reward for, mm, their, for labor. their labor. Mm. There are things I've been able to labor in the ministry, in yeah. my life, mm. in many other things. I could not have achieved anything without the help of yeah. my wife. Mm -hmm. And then it says, two are better than one because they will keep each other warm. Mm. And I know mm. people may interpret that sexually and yeah. what have you. But it is talking about having somebody who has your back. Yeah. That when life is cold out there, yes. there is a place you can go to mm. and be able to find comfort mm -hmm. and encouragement and all that. Then he talks about two are better than one because they can resist an attack. Mm -hmm. There are things as a man I cannot resist without the help of my wife, yes. right? There is all sorts of seductions out here in the mm -hmm. world. But when God gives you a spouse and yeah. a godly spouse for that matter, he increases your battle capacity in life. Mm -hmm. And then it finishes by saying, two are better than one, for when one falls, yeah, he yeah. will lift the other one up. Yeah. So when you look at that in the context of marriage, mm -hmm. marriage creates the perfect context mm -hmm. for that scripture to be fulfilled. Yes. Yeah. And what is a better description of life 
than you exactly. lived. You had good reward for your labor. Mm-hmm. You had a warm life and a warm relationship. Mm-hmm. You had good battles that were victorious. Mm-hmm. And lastly, you were able to have somebody who could lift you lift up. You. Wow. That is God's idea of marriage. Wow. And for me, I am grateful. Mm-hmm. I do not see any other way my life could have been where it is mm-hmm. if I was not married to this you woman. You got used to makeup. <laughs> yeah. I got used to makeup. <laughs> I reduced Nowadays I even see when the eye pencil has not been used yeah. accurately. <laughs> and it's been an amazing journey. Uh-huh. I would not trade marriage for anything. Wow. It is one institution that God ordained that has not only temporal benefits mm-hmm. but it has eternal benefits in terms of what it can do for you yeah. as a human being yeah. you know when i look at you now 15 years later yeah. i'm thinking when i get to 15 we yes. won't have challenges <laughs> we'll be like you well, no we hmm? have challenges you we had challenges, challenges when you were two we years do. we still do yeah. we still do but, uh, but now yeah. we, we find ourselves handling them differently oh, we have learned better. more to honor each other mm-hmm. and and i think the one thing that growing in God does mm-hmm. is it it brings a culture of honor. Mm. Yes. And when there is honor, it does not mean there will be no disagreement. Mm-hmm. But even when there is a disagreement, it will be handled honorably. Honor, yeah. You will not be shouting at your spouse yeah. or screaming at them or beating them up or belittling them. them. Yeah. yeah, you know, there will be an atmosphere of honor. Yes. And when there is an atmosphere of honor, there is no disagreement that can destroy that relationship. Wow. Yeah. Why did you stick together, even in the stormy seasons? I think God is the yes. number one reason why mm-hmm. we, we wanted to honor God. Something mm-hmm. deep down. There was a, there was a, there was a conviction that, yes. mm-hmm. that if you quit, you will never see what could have been. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And if you don't endure the wilderness seasons, you may never see the promised land days. Yes. So I think there was that conviction, mm-hmm. and there is a conviction we had about marriage. For us, we said we are in this thing to stay. Mm-hmm. We may fight, we may disagree, it yeah. may get messy. But we are committed we to the committed. vision that God mm. had for marriage, yeah. even when it was not happening. Mm. By the way, every vision is for an appointed time. time. It may mm-hmm. not happen at the time you mm-hmm. expect. So you've got to keep going until you get, you to, get that to that appointed that time. time. So I think even when we felt like quitting, mm. we just kept going yeah. because we felt there is an appointed time we will uh-huh. get to. And we I found. think at that time it was seed, seed. It was seed and then time. there was time. Time. We are still reaping. We are reaping. But there, there is also patience. Yeah, patience um, part of the reason why Paul says that when you get married, you will have many troubles mm-hmm. <laughs> is because marriage will trouble every carnality you've been hiding. Yes. So it does not talk about marriage being a place of trouble, mm-hmm. but marriage creates a context to trouble your carnality yes, out of you yes. so that the, the nature of Christ can mm-hmm. be built. And once the nature of Christ is built, you find there are lesser troubles and mm-hmm. more joys. Oh, yeah. And that's what God wants to bring us to. Wow. So just keep going, mm-hmm. keep working with the oh, word, yeah. keep listening to, to God, God, keep listening to each other, yes. Yes. and keep trying to develop yourself to be better mm-hmm. for God and by default, you'll be better for and yourself. And also listen yeah. to voices that... And listen to voices yeah, have that gone ahead of you. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So that has been I, I listen us. a lot to, 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 to people who have gone ahead yeah. of absolutely, me. Absolutely, absolutely. And that way, I have really, really, yeah. really grown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm. it's, when you don't have a really... A tea, you mm. have to find yeah. you have mentors. To the way, voices, yeah. 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 yeah, voices that speak to you. Yeah. And by the way, let me also say something about voice now that you mm. brought the issue of voice. Mm. Marriages are both made or destroyed by the voice Voices, they listen. yes. The first marriage was destroyed by a voice. voice. Yeah. Mm. So you've got to be listening? very selective with mm-hmm. the voices. There are men that I know if I start listening to them today, mm. this marriage will not even True. end this year. Yeah. Right? So I've got to be very careful, especially to be around men that believe in marriage, Mm -hmm. believe in the role that God has ordained a man to play in his marriage, Mm -hmm. and are committed to conversations that Mm -hmm. enhance marriage. Because a lot of the conversations that are going on around the world, they don't enhance. Mm -hmm. We critique something, but we are not willing to listen to voices that would enhance Uh it. But marriage does not... You know people say marriage is bad, marriage is this. Marriage is a place that magnifies who you've been all, all along. along. So if you've been a scam, don't call marriage a scam. <laughs> it is you. Marriage has magnified the scammer in you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I think it is the voices you listen to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because like for me, Rhoda, mm-hmm. I think for both of us, yeah. I think if there's anything I do, 
I'm always watching stuff on yeah. YouTube on marriage. I'm always reading books mm-hmm. on marriage, mm-hmm. reading on parenting. Yes. How will I not thrive in it? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I've been working on mm-hmm. myself yeah. when it comes to that area. Mm-hmm. So who are you listening to? What are you reading? Yeah. 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 Because you, ju- you, you just can't read the b- Bible mm-hmm. and say mm-hmm. that now I can sit down and wait mm-hmm. for the yeah. Spirit to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to listen to people yeah, who have, who have right done it voices. right, mm-hmm. who, who can be role models. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And nowadays, whom mm-hmm. are you following on oh, social media? Thank you. Thank you. That is a big mm. one. That's a big mm. one. That's yeah. a big one. Mm. Because social media is a cocktail of all sorts of confusing voices. Yes. If you're not very intentional. Mm. And you, you have know, to be intentional. Yeah, you've got mm. to be intentional. Mm. Because you get to a place now, social media begins to suggest to you mm-hmm. based on the data they've collected yes. about who you follow. Mm. So if you've been following the right voices, yes, the right they, voices. They more they suggest yeah. the right ones. If yes. you've been listening to the wrong ones. Mm-hmm. So yes. again, that is so critical mm. because faith comes by hearing yeah. Yeah. Exactly. and and the voice you hear creates the f- what you will have Believe faith for in, yeah. so if you listen to voices that are saying marriage is a scam mm. you will create voices for creating a scam experience uh, you just right? reminded that's me oh, deep. yeah that's My deep, I'm I'm deep yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, i just saw something it reminded me i saw yes. someone i think it was trending on in mm. my mm. um a man yeah. advising other men yes once you make a woman pregnant yes your job is done. Yeah. Gosh. Hey, yeah. Leave her alone. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I saw that and yeah. I was like. Yeah. And the other men are saying they're supporting. Mm. At mm. this this business of you mm. buying what she's craving, ah, uh, your work was done. Can you imagine that is what you're listening to every, yes, every single day. day of your life? Mm. That is what forms you now. That is what becomes a reality yes. in your world. Mm. But wait, I mean, there are people who are doing things better. Things very, they're doing mm. things very well in this other side. Yes. That if you choose to open that door, mm. listen to the right people. Mm-hmm. You, you know, find it's interesting that, when you've said that. I've just yeah. remembered when mm-hmm. I was young and I was a teenager, I used to listen to a lot of hip hop music. Mm-hmm. So there was this very popular musician who was called Tupac. Mm. Mm-hmm. So he grew up by a single mother. Yeah. You know, those kinds of men that impregnate a girl and leave yeah. her. Mm. And so when he grew up, he wrote a song to his mm. mother. Yeah. And in the lyrics of that song, yeah. there's something he said that I think the men that are driving that kind of narrative should listen to. Yeah. He said, the day my father died, mm. I didn't cry. Because all along, I was looking for a father. He, he was, was gone. Yeah. Those are the words of Tupac. This was not even a born again believer. Yeah. This is just a man mm-hmm. saying, you planted a seed and you abandoned it. Yes. Now you cannot come and lay any claim on it when there is a harvest. No. That's why you find a lot of men write songs for their mothers, but no, they don't yeah. write for their fathers. For their fathers. Because you mm-hmm. cannot make an investment you're not willing to nurture. Mm-hmm. You cannot plant a seed you're not willing to cultivate. Mm-hmm. If you look at John 15, it talks about God being the, the, you know, the, the, the one that dresses the vineyard. Mm-hmm. True, so that is cultivating. Vine. Whatever you plant, mm-hmm. you must cultivate it to its mm-hmm. full maturity. Yeah. That is what shows that you've taken responsibility as yeah. a man. And yeah. sadly, if you don't, there is what is called the law of seed and harvest. Uh-huh. It will catch yes. up with you. Mm-hmm. One day that son may be a great man yeah. mm-hmm. and will never want to see you because you abandon. The project you abandon, mm-hmm. you cannot claim to have facilitated its greatness. Yeah. That is misled. Wow. Well, we have to yeah. end, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're parting short. What? Maybe you can talk to people. We always say those who are planning for their wedding, they won't, yeah. they, they, they won't listen mm. right now. So you're talking to those <laughs> who've been married for like two months. Yeah, yeah. Those mm. planning for the wedding, they are not even watching mm. this. Ah, yeah. ah, it is uh, going to be a smooth ride. Yeah. So why do we need all these things? They will watch two months yeah. in marriage. Yeah. Now yes. talk to them now. Yeah. So you want to go first? Yeah. Two months old. Uh, two months old. Mm-hmm. Um, finally, brethren. Yes. <laughs> let me tell you something <laughs> that will help you. Yeah. The institution that you have gotten in is beautiful Mm -hmm. and it it can work depending on how you choose to handle it. Mm -hmm. If you choose to work on it to cultivate the the, the garden, Mm -hmm. you will have a beautiful what? 
a beautiful flower garden mm -hmm. if you choose, depending on how you cultivate it. Yeah. So depending on how much you're willing to work on yourself, depending on how much uh, you're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to work on you, mm -hmm. that is how much you're going to reap. Mm -hmm. So I would advise you to please submit to the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. submit to voices that will speak, that speak good things about marriage, positive things about marriage mm -hmm. and i am telling you marriage is so beautiful mm. so so beautiful mm -hmm. if you choose to do it god's way Absolutely. and to do it right yeah. so god bless you it has been an honor Thank to you. speak to you guys i'm, I'm blessed <laughs> oh yeah. yes ah. now, what do you say when your wife is that eloquent imagine what do you say <laughs> you take her out <laughs> buy her coffee <laughs> With this bottom up economy. I'm in for a treat. <laughs> so I think for me, I'll say Proverbs mm -hmm. 24, all the mm -hmm. way from verse 30 mm -hmm. to the end. It says, I went by the vineyard of a man who was lazy, mm -hmm. and I observed and I was instructed. Wow. He says, the garden was overthrow, overgrown with thorns. Mm -hmm. The fence was broken. Yeah. What brought that garden to that state? Neglect. Mm -hmm. marriage becomes what it becomes based on whether you nurture it or you neglect it. Yeah. And the choice to nurture marriage demands the endless pursuit of one resource called wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We start marriages through love, yes. but we build marriages by wisdom. Mm -hmm. So there are places love cannot take you beyond. That's why you need the access to the wisdom, wisdom of God. Yeah. And the wisdom of God is found in his word mm -hmm. and it is found by the humble. So humble yourself, yeah. seek his wisdom, cultivate your marriage and you will see the glory on the other side. Amen. Amen. Wow, I, I should not even add anything. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't. <laughs> but I have to because we have a book for your son. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, this thank is a you. gift to your son. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a gift thank for my teen son by Sami Kaihuri. I always Amazing. gift thank my guests so who have teens because the audience are going to pay for yeah. that one. Wow. <laughs> and so are you philanthropic to pay for the calendar as well? Ah, we have a, so a calendar, a oh, prayer my. calendar. Beautiful. You continue praying. Thank Wow. So for your marriage. Wow. You know, all your conversation has mm. been centered on God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's made me wonder how yeah. people do marriage without, without God. God. I wonder you can do cohabitation without yeah. God, but marriage, marriage probably no. not. <laughs> so thank you for that thank reminder. So it's a powerful... Oh, you're thank welcome. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, the way you've centered everything on God. Sometimes we get so busy. Yeah. Sometimes we think we can now handle everything on our mm. own and neglect God. Yeah. But without Him, our yeah. marriages cannot. Absolutely. We cannot make it. Absolutely. Thank you for that so powerful reminder. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. sharing your journey. Thank you. You've reminded each other the way yeah. you do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> In Saba Saba, how you met. That old town, well, my God. Yeah, and I hope you have been inspired. What have you learned? Please share so that we can continue growing together. And if you have a suggestion on, on whom we should host here, let us know as well. And if you also want to share your story, your story, yeah. you guys are confused. Now. You should end Take this. A of what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you'd like to share your story, yeah. let me know as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. God bless you. It's bye from us.